We're going to do the show. Uh, the special guest, uh, the artist formerly known as Levi Wrangler, is here. Uh, and um, so, what we wanted to do today is um, kind of like the Zelda guide that yeah. we did, uh, but for another game that we all, we all like a lot, uh, yeah. called Fire Emblem. Yeah. This is the heard, uh, heard of it. Beginner's Guide 101 to uh, Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem. There you go. Um, uh, speaking of 101, our 101 pick for this was Awakening. Correct. Right. Fire right. Emblem Awakening for the 3DS. Fire Emblem Awakening. Presumably anybody that's actually interested in the series has probably played this one already. Um, True. Uh, so you, if, if you did play it, there you go. You've you've won a one. You 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 did it. You are one step ahead. You are um, that close to and graduation. If, if you haven't, you should play it because yeah, it's awesome. That's actually yeah. it's it's really good. It's oh yeah, pretty, it's pretty easy as far as Fire Emblem games go. Yes, because like it, this is a game that not only is it just our pick, but this was a, a exclusively designed and marketed to be. An intro to Fire Emblem. Yeah, like, baby's baby's first Fire Emblem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean it was it was the breakout Fire Emblem in the West for a reason. I think because it was so accessible. Yes. Um, if you want to see more detailed analysis, go watch our Fire Emblem Awakening review uh, and yes. give us uh, give us views and money and stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, because there's money, one of those money, yeah. money. Give me money. <laughs> there's one of those buttons. That you just yeah. Press that money. Give money. Every time you press it. Uh, <laughs> but just keep sending in those pennies, yes, viewers. Please. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, your pennies should be uh, located at... There's a slot in your computer. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, disk drive, something like that. Anyway, fire on. Uh, <laughs> right. So, yeah. Uh, the reason uh, we kind of picked this one, uh, not only just because Nintendo kind of made it that way, marketed it for that purpose, but this one... And Fire Emblem is one of those series where they, they've changed up the mechanics every game. So there's a lot of different ways the game's been played over the generations. And this one has kind of married all of them together to their not to like yeah. the very greatest extent of each of them but just a minor it's, part of each it's of them it's very like it's the one. greatest hits of, of yes. mechanics it's, yeah that's a good way to put it yeah like you know um and I, I think that I think that ends up making uh, making it a really good game and that it sort of takes all these different parts and in a way it's sort of a uh you know it's like a this was going to possibly be the last one so it's yeah, sort of yeah. like this additional celebration of of, of the game's history, whatever, mm -hmm. so, I mean, it makes sense that they would do that, you know, here's the child, child mechanic from, I think it was Genealogy, Genealogy. Genealogy. Um, War. Um, War. Um, it had the map played, the, yes, <laughs> the <laughs> map thing from Sacred Stones, yeah, and I think Sacred Gaiden Stones. was like that as well, or yeah, there's been one in the Japanese uh, um, era that added the map as well, and th there's all this DLC, here's Marth, and Ike, and Roy, and Lin, and all these characters from the yeah. past are here, pot, you know, that you can use, and even without the DLC, they had the, like, the spot pass, you can, they basically introduce you to every single character in Fire Emblem history, right, so that's mm -hmm. one of the really cool things about this game, yeah, um, Mechanics. It's it's not the hardest Fire Emblem per se, which, which is good. It's your yeah. first one. It's your first some one. hard Fire Emblem. Yeah. But I uh, I don't know. I definitely wouldn't say it's the easiest Fire Emblem. No, like, be probably I would no, say Sacred that Stones. would that would be the second one, mm -hmm. which right. is Sacred Stones. Right. Um, which speaking of speaking yeah. of the second one is Sacred Stones. Second Stone. one is Sacred Stones. Stone. Stone. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> because I mean, that one's it's weird because we're suggesting it after the one hundred and one. Because it's easier than the 101, but it's also, it's got, it's it's strange because it, it was the first one to introduce the map concept, and it focuses so much on that. Yes, and the the reason that it is so easy is because of that map. Mm -hmm. The way, the way it works is after chapter, like, six or something, you unlock an area called the Tower of Volney, which yes. you can literally just repeat until all of your characters are maxed out, mm -hmm. and then... You then face roll through the rest of the game. Yes. Um, but it, it introduced that, but it also had a lot of good concepts uh, in terms of uh, that one had a little bit uncharacteristic lords to it. It had a Lance Lord, and he really wasn't like. It was Ephraim, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, it had some good story elements it to it. It had a splitting story path. I actually, mm -hmm. one of the things I really like, and I think. Um, Sacred Stones uh, has a thing where, you know, generally you level up one, th one through 20, and then you level up into an advanced class. What oh, I yeah, like in Sacred right. Stones with it was I had, uh, you could choose two different yeah. ones, where usually, you know, if you're a Myrmidon, you 
you go into a sword master, but in this one they'd be like, you can be a sword master, you can be an assassin or whatever. And they never brought that back, have they? they well, no, I, that was an awakening, was it? Yeah, that was that was the whole shtick of awakening. Is that? Oh, that's it, right. It, it, it yeah, mixed yeah. it mixed path of radiance's leveling system and uh, that, uh, and then stones, shadow yeah. dragons uh, respec. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because uh, yeah. it's a greatest hits, but um, greatest hits. I always thought that was a really good way to do it. Um, the game's open to a lot of experimentation in a lot of way because it's kind of easy, so you can kind of just blaze through it, check people out. You know, like oh, maybe this character would be better at this. I think mm-hmm. it's got a lot of replayability. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a oh, lot yeah. of fun. It's it's yeah. very fun. Fire um, and also it's easy, so yeah. um, that should be a good one. I think starting out. I think. One of the only reasons I think I, I'd, I'd say Awakening over Sacred Stones is because Awakening's going to be a lot easier to find. Yeah. Um, and it's more recent, like, in terms yeah. of graphical. And right. Like 3DS is probably system you have. I mean, you have, so... Yeah. Um, if you're not used to looking at them sprites... Right. Yeah. The game does look great. That's, those GBA that's games true. look really good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's another thing about the game is it just looks beautiful. Mm-hmm. Like, that was... That was before, you know, all the 3D stuff. That was the the way it, it happened. And that one was just, like, the pinnacle. Because the previous ones were Super Nintendo NES couldn't quite maximize sprite yeah. stuff. But the animations in the yeah, GBA Yeah, I think those are the best, best combat animations are on the GBA. Yeah. Death. But that, that kind of concludes the 101 and the beginner's course. But then you go into interme- inter- the intermediate level. Where do you go from there? You know, we want something a little more difficult. Uh, the and first that's, that's where Ike comes in yes. because you'll get no sympathy from him. <laughs> you won't. You won't get any sympathy. But he does fight for his he friends. He does fight for his yeah. friends. So you will triumph eventually. Yes, and yeah. I, it's it's something you, you have to prepare yourself for. You so, do. Yeah. Um, but uh, ether. <laughs> great <laughs> pizza. <laughs> uh, so Path of Radiance, we select this one because it was the first home console one we got in the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was the first kind of it, this was the jump to 3D mm-hmm. for Fire Emblem and it made the transition quite well. Yeah, it did. Um, again, the difficulty it wasn't too difficult, wasn't too easy um, it was just sort of very basic Fire Emblem, it wasn't, there wasn't much, there was a you know, specific mechanic to the game but it wasn't anything really out there yeah. or confusing. It's, it's... Uh, it introduced the ability system uh, where each class has a special ability. Yeah, introduced it for the West. Um, I think they had it in one of the Japanese ones before. Uh, uh, possibly. I think maybe genealogy had some kind of class, skill system or, or something similar to that. This this one it uh, built a, heavily upon it. This though. this mm-hmm. one um, kind of did the modern skill. I think this is the first time like Astra and, and Soul yeah, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, were. Thing, the stuff the the skills in Awakening. This is where a lot of those originated yeah. from. Yeah. And like like you were saying, it's pretty it's pretty classic base Fire Emblem. Uh, unlike the other two, this one's linear. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's no it's, overworld map. Mm-hmm. You just go. Okay, you just go le- level, next level, next level, next level. And this yeah. is how Fire Emblem usually was. Right. So this so kind of jumps you into the real sort of and, way and to expect. The, the reason why Sacred Stones and Awakening are a lot easier is because in one of these linear ones, you can't really grind mm-hmm. uh, for experience. Yeah. So you have to dole out the experience. Kind of the experience is almost like a resource. Yeah. yeah. And and that's mitigated a little bit in this because it did introduce the bonus XP mechanic. Right. Um, yeah. But it's not. Uh, it it's that's again why it's before any other of the, the more basic ones in the mm-hmm. series. Uh, but it's also not too hard. It, it's this is the next progression difficulty for you, um, and it, it's just a very good story to it. That's another thing about it. it has mm-hmm. a really good storyline. Yeah, yeah, I like the cast um, a lot. Yeah, um, good characters. I don't know if we mentioned this. I don't know if people would know this, but. Um, most of the games uh, have nothing to do with each other. Yeah, um, that's true. So that that might be an important thing to note. Uh, so this is the game with Ike in it. You pro- most people coming into this will probably know Marth, Roy, and Ike uh, from just from Smash. Yeah. Um, from Smash so uh, yeah, the games are sort of like Final Fantasy in that they they all have their own subcontinuity with a couple exceptions. Um, yeah, some have a sequel to them. Some have a sequel to them, but I don't think cool. there are. Well, I think maybe the Marth games have more than two. I think there's maybe three that take place in that uh, yeah, continuity. Yeah. Uh, but I think Marth's only in two of them. So um, mm-hmm. that's probably something kind of important to know. Um, that, uh, yeah, this is the Ike game. There is a Marth game, but we'll get to that. Mm-hmm. And the Roy game was never released in the United States. 
officially. There have been fan translations for emulators that you yeah. can get. Right. We'll probably talk about those yeah. at some point. But don't, support don't the point. official release. Yeah. yeah. It says so, says so at the beginning of the video and stuff. Yeah. Uh, buy so. the one. Buy the American Fire Emblem 6 that exists. <laughs> it exists. Support it. It'll support they'll it. come out with it eventually. If they will. They will. It'll happen. And then they'll release Mother 3 and... <laughs> They'll release uh, everything. And Duke Nukem Forever Duke will <laughs> actually come out <laughs> for it's real. Be for like real, the mystery yeah. of the genealogy of uh, the Fire Emblem Ace, Swords Ace and Ace Dragons. Ace Attorney Two yeah, or uh, Ace Attorney Investigations Two. Will yeah, come out. Investigations like Two. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. So, so the next game is uh, Fire Emblem Seven. I think is yeah. what we usually refer to it. It's also Fire Emblem. It's known as just Fire Emblem in the uh, States. It's uh, uh, Reckon no Ken. Is that the yeah? Is that yeah, it's Reckon no Ken in Japan. Six is Funen no Tsurugi. Yeah, I always get those two mixed Funen up. Funen no Tsurugi and Reckon no Ken. Yeah. This is the um, Sword of Seals. Sword. Of, no, this no, this is, is uh, that was no, this is Blazing Sword. Okay. Sword of Seals was six. Okay, yeah. so Japanese title is Bla Fire Emblem Blazing, Blazing uh, Sword. American title is just Fire Emblem, but it's the seventh iteration of it. Yeah. So usually referred to as Fire Emblem it's, Seven. Uh, to play on Smash knowledge, this game is a prequel to the game that Roy, Roy was, was in. in. So yeah. you play as Roy's dad in this. Who is Ella Wood? Ella Wood. Yes. Um, so uh, this I, I this is a really good one. It's yes. a pretty similar path. I think this is yeah. uh, for you guys. I believe this is the first one you played. Yeah, yes. it was because um, um, we picked we picked that stuff up right up when because it, it was melee. Melee yeah. introduced us to it and it was yeah. really good. Um, but yeah, we this was the first one for us, especially for a lot of people, I guess, who are big fans of Fire Emblem. This is the first one we put mm -hmm. this kind of farther in on the list for someone who's going to pick it up nowadays because it's actually fairly difficult. Uh, yeah, it, it had uh, it had quite the learning curve, and yes. uh, um, it <laughs> yeah, it didn't have any map system, so people today might be get used to that. So that's why it's going to be a little bit further in, but it's also linear, just like Path of Radiance is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It has three different storylines, and technically, to get all three, you have to beat the game twice. Because mm -hmm. the first one, you go through Lin's quest and Elowood's quest, and then it says you unlock Hector's quest, but then you have to go through and do it again. Yeah, you can start at just Hector's quest. Oh, you can? Yeah, um, yeah you because can once that. it goes in, it lets you pick uh, okay. from the three, but you don't have to do Lin's quest again specifically. But generally, you want to do Lin's quest so you can level Lin up yeah, one of the other yeah, guys. Yeah. So you basically so, yeah. do. So, yeah. But uh, this one, it didn't really have any focus. It was just a pure fire emblem. It's yeah. real, no, no real gimmick to this one at no. all. I guess it was it was. It was just very here's your guys, here's the map, go. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's a, it was a no, good one. Go to the next. Well no, this one I think technically introduced the uh, different victory conditions. Different was victory its, conditions was its was its thing. Yeah, because yeah. up until that point it, it had always just capture capture the castle or capture the throne. Um, that's that's, I'm not that's sure a about positive it. change. Cause Cause yeah. Was that not in six? No, because no, six that wasn't is so six. Boring, yeah, six. That's, that's all six is is captures. Well, then yeah, um, this probably was um, the one. That it also had three lords. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it had three different stories. So I guess that was also kind of a thing it did. Yeah. Um, the, this is just a really solid Fire Emblem game. Oh yeah. Though. Yeah. Um, Very good storytelling. With no, the no real frills to it. Just really solid. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you do get to look to two thirty-plus chapter run-throughs. Yes. So have fun with that. But it's a lot of fun. This yeah. one is just pure Fire Emblem, and mm -hmm. I don't know. That's I don't know, that's not much else to say about it. This yeah. is really good. It's good to play. Um, but after you play the other ones, now you uh, get that was the uh, I guess the exitory mm -hmm. class of intermediate level. Mm -hmm. uh, so now we've got the inter the we've got the intermediate level. After intermediate. So we've got expert. It, it, Ex expert. Ex part. Uh, I actually started with this game, uh, so which I feel really sad for you. Yeah. So. Which means I guess we're all full of shit because I yeah. guess you can just start playing whatever game you, you can. Want. I wouldn't suggest. No, you it. can't. You, that's you yeah. can play any of these in any order you want. This is our like sort of order. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I played Radiant Dawn. Radiant Dawn is the second Ike game. Yeah. And I really like this game. Oh yeah. But yeah. I do, do not play it first. No. It's really it's hard. It's really it's. <laughs> and the reason, one of the biggest reasons it's hard is that you have to have foreknowledge. Mm -hmm. Of how the game works, mm -hmm. which means even, even like just the first time you play it, regardless of how like into Fire Emblem you are, it's always going to be difficult if you don't just know yeah. what's what. You you will have to restart it once you hit the end game. Yeah, because um, yeah. um, sometimes you can't even. Uh, that's something that has happened in previous Fire Emblems. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on how you play them, you could actually run into that in seven as well, where mm -hmm. you just weren't able to finish it. The yeah. end game of this of this is a five part. Just total freaking like it is Slog. grueling, yeah. and 
you're going to get to the, the you, it is very, and more than likely, you're going to get to the end of this game and not be able to beat it. Yeah. Um, and you're going to have to restart the whole thing over again. I did, and then continued playing it. I don't know why I did. Usually this would totally turn me off, but I really like the game up until that point. The reason this game is weird is that it is kind of tells this, and one of the reasons I like it a lot is that it's a very unconventional kind of Fire Emblem narrative, mm -hmm. and instead of just following one lord, you have a constantly shifting perspectives in the story. Mm -hmm. So you'll be like, okay, you're following this group of guys, but it'll only be for like three maps mm -hmm. or something like that, and then you'll never see them again. Or you know, well, they'll, it's they'll not that you'll never see them again. You just, you just won't see them till the very end. Till the very end again. Yeah. So it's very easy to say have uh, like this character we were talking about Tormod. He'll he's, come. He'll come. He's in one of the first mages you get. Yeah, and you're like, oh, he's like amazing, and you're like, oh yeah, and you will like clear a map with him, and then he'll just leave, and then you won't see him again until like the end of the game, and you just wasted, you wasted all, all that experience. All that That's experience. a valuable resource environment. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so you have to kind of know who is and is not in the story for large chunks of time, mm -hmm. and then um, who is worthy enough to have that experience. Yes. Don't yeah. Uh, this always level Sheenon. Always. Sheenon and Har. Are amazing. Um, Shinon, as I always say, don't use the ar archer guy unless his name's Shinon, because <laughs> Shinon is like the best freaking unit ever. Um, but yeah, this game is—it's uh, really weird, and you—you you would have to know yeah. sort of sort of who is good, because this this is also a uh, kind of a because coming off of Radiant Dawn, every time I start a new one. Or I would I would start a new one and ask one of you like uh, who's really good in this game, or or whatever, and you'd be like yeah they're all pretty good this guy's pretty good or whatever. Radiant Dawn has this extremely like definitive list. list. Yeah. yeah, it's incredibly because that's the other thing is that its cast is actually huge and you have to weed out which ones like to actually use. Eighty characters or something yeah. like that, and there are really good ones and really crappy ones. So you have to know who's good, you have to know who's in the game, because there are characters that are good that aren't in the game uh, that much. Yeah. Like, like you know... Um, like Tormod. Like like Tormod or, or uh, Kieran is amazing, but he's only in, like, three missions or whatever. Mm. Or Joffrey's good, but he's only also in, like, three missions. Yeah. So you just have to kind of know. It's almost like you have to either be, like, be clairvoyant, like you need to be able to see into the future. <laughs> have a guide, which kind of ruins the fun. Right. Or play through it, screw up. A lot, and then go back and play it for real after you kind of learn the ins and outs. Yeah. So uh, that's why I would definitely put it in the advanced section. And also, it is legitimately a lot harder than the other Fire Emblems. Yes. Um, um, normal mode is excruciating. Oh, yeah. For that first, there's a ten chapter part where you have the the Dawn Brigade, and they're just like you play as them, and they're like the, just the weakest turds. Because that was the that was one of the the things about this that it, to differentiate itself from uh, Path of Radiance, it actually introduced a third tier of uh, class upgrades. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say that was the other focus um, of this. this so you can and so and so in the first ten levels or whatever, you have a bunch of base people. They're all the base class, mm -hmm. um, and then after that, you go and you play as Ike and his guys, who all start off as second tier, tier, tier two. Yeah. and then you go. back back to your first people mm -hmm. who most of them are now critically under leveled for the for the stuff that they're doing yeah. and it's just bad yeah the uh, the, the difficulty is pretty uneven as yeah. well I think it's a I think it's a you know looking back on it um, I think it's a very flawed fire emblem game but I think it's a really rewarding one mm -hmm. yeah, and the ones with the flaws are always the best uh, yeah. it's my personal favorite I believe it's yeah, the, uh, you li you like it as well um I think it's cool. I think it tells just a really cool... It's a very different Fire Emblem. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really rewarding, but I think you're going to have to, like, save that one for later. Don't yeah. do what I did. That was a bad move on my part, so... Yeah, you had no choice at the time. Yeah. That's just what was around. I just saw it. I was yeah. like, oh, let me pick up. You know, I was like, I want to get into the series. Also, and I it's Wii. for the Wii. Yeah. 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 Which you can Mention play it now. That. But yeah. they let you yeah. use a classic controller or a GameCube. Yeah. So that's good. No waggle crap. So but No waggle. Thanks, the last, Intelligent Systems. The last one... And this is in a class of its own. In the in, uh, in the skip class, the discard oh, pile. The discard pile. Uh, for America, the last one we haven't uh, announced is Fire DS, which is uh, Shadow of Light 
Shadow, Shadow of Dragon. Dragon. Shadow of Dragon. Yeah, Shadow Dragon. I, I like it's, Fire it, Emblem. It's a remake of yeah. Fire Emblem One: Heroes of Light and Shadow. That's yeah, the title is. Um, and uh, this is the game with Marth, or the first game remake, has Marth. Yeah, it's a remake this of the first game, uh, this ever, game is, on the Famicom. Uh, I really don't like this one at all. None, None of us like it. Yeah, um, that's why I put it in the skip. It's. I beat it, and so uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how you did. That. I don't know how you did it either. This game's uh, boring. It's boring. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, it's really boring. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the graphics are bad. Like, yeah, it like took bad everything for the good. DS. Yes, it took uh, everything good out. None of the, there's no good at battle animations. Just turn them off. The, if you the, play this game, just do yourself the a favor. The battle animations time. look like really stiff claymation figures. Yeah. It'd be cool if it really was claymation, but it's uh, not. The, no, that's the thing. It's like they wanted to keep it 3D on a system that is the equivalent of a handheld N64. Yeah. So they're all really shitty, really tiny polygons. And the, the maps are just blue. Yeah. yeah. Just blue. Just like, everything's blue. This I one's get, light blue, this dark blue. It's just yeah. all like... Because like, I get this was a remake of the Famicom one, which wasn't... Like, that was the first one, and it didn't have all that good of animations and everything, because it, you know, the it's limitations first. at the time. Yeah. I'm going to say this right now. Fire Emblem... Uh, uh, for the very first one for the family home has better animations to, to actually watch than the, the DA, DS remake because you're going in yeah. with the knowledge because it, it's like this knight who goes up he's like and that's yeah. essentially what it is in this one but it's a fucking DS title <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I mean it's all it's all just capture the base capture yeah, the base yeah that's the other thing the character models are so boring like they didn't bother updating anything about the game a lot of a lot of the characters just never speak yeah like, mm -hmm. like they'll just show up they'll never say anything and then they'll yeah. just it's just the cast is boring, the game's boring, the graphics are boring, it's awful, so don't And play. it's weird, and it's sad because it did have the interesting mechanic, uh, it actually was one of the first games to introduce the whole make this character into something else. Yeah, that's the, right. The reclass uh, was the reclass. really yeah. cool and I think was done a lot better in Awakening, and yeah. also Awakening doesn't suck balls. Um, so, uh, yeah, don't play the Shadow Dragon. But, and one other thing you were going to say, one... Oh, there was quick. one, there's one quick thing I wanted to add, um... Just come into it with a serious come, in, come into it expecting to play more serious games, because I had a friend who recently uh, had been playing a lot of Disgaea, uh, which is a series that I'm not all too familiar with, but I know it is very similar. Um, and then they tried to go play Fire Emblem because they had heard it was very similar, and then it was like, this game's taking itself too seriously, I just can't get into it, just because, you know, they had been playing it's so much game. of that com the comic styles of Disgaea.